Professor Lloyd Dimshaco and I will be your teacher in music. Arts. Physical education and health. And I hope that you will learn something from this video. It's my bedtime with Sir Lloyd. In your previous art classes, you have learned to appreciate art through an analysis of the elements of arts and principles of design. In this video, we will discuss the art of the Renaissance period. Here are some examples. Can you guess the title of this painting? Very good! It's Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is an oil painting by Leonardo da Vinci. How about this one? Very good! La Pieta. It is a marble sculpture by Michelangelo Buonarroti. The Renaissance period derived its name from the French word that means rebirth. The artworks during this period were inspired by the Greek artistic tradition. They portrayed individuality and the value of the human being was its motivating factor. The artists were interested in showing the human character, the capabilities of human mind and body, social relationships, economic condition, and the people's place in political life. The Renaissance period enabled human beings to achieve their highest potentials by applying perfection of beauty and by practicing intellectual changes, exploration, and experimentation. This is why the Renaissance period is referred to as the Age of Humanism. Renaissance art and culture traveled around the globe through trade and conquest. Let us proceed to form and style in Renaissance painting. Form encompasses the elements of art and principles of organization that guide the artists in art making. The elements of art include the qualities that we experience through our senses. These are line, shape, color, texture, form, value, and space. Let's discuss each of the elements. These are used by the artists in creating art. They are what you use to create an aesthetically pleasing work. First is line. It is a mark made by a pointed tool such as a brush, pen, or stick. There are many types of line. We have thick, thin, horizontal, vertical, zigzag, diagonal, curly, curved, spiral, and many more. Next is shape. It is a flat, enclosed area of an artwork created through lines. It is the outline of someone or something. It refers to a geometric figure. Examples are square, triangle, circle, and rectangle. The next is color. Color is one of the most dominant elements. It refers to the property possessed by an object, producing different sensations on the eye as a result of the way the object reflects or emits light. Examples are red, orange, green, violet, blue, and many more. The next is texture. It refers to how something feels or looks like it would feel if you touch it. There are two kinds of texture. We have real and implied. When we say real, it pertains to how something actually feels such as a sculpture. When we say implied, this is when an artist paints or draws a texture but it is artificial. Next is form. This refers to objects having three dimensions or height, width, and depth. Examples of form can include cubes, cylinders, and spheres. Next is value. It refers to lightness or darkness of an object, the degree of lightness or darkness, the effect of light and shade in a picture. And the last is space. This is an element of art that refers to the emptiness or area around or within the objects. Space has its two types. We have positive and negative space. Positive space refers to the part of the work that takes up space, while the negative space is the area around that object. And those are the elements of art. Now, let us proceed to style. Style is the manner in which the artist expresses himself. Artists are recognized by their viewers through their style. Let us now examine two of the famous Renaissance arts. First is The Birth of Venus by Botticelli. And next is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. 
let's take a closer look of these paintings. Botticelli's The Birth of Venus shows Venus born from the foam of the sea and carried to shore on a seashell. The figures on the left side symbolize winds blowing Venus to the shore where hours are to cover her with a reddish garment decorated with stars. This color breaks the monotony of flesh color that dominates most parts of the painting. Other elements in the painting are lines drawn throughout the figures, movement suggested by the winds blown toward Venus, and the rhythmic patterns created by the tiny waves. The texture of roughness and smoothness are seen in the different objects, such as the leaves, cloth, ribs, and the flowing hair of the figures. Let us now proceed to Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. It is painted on the wall of the refectory of the Church of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan, Italy. Using fresco, da Vinci depicted a psychological study of Jesus' words, One of you will betray me. To this statement, we see the apostles individually reacting. Jesus is at the center, with his head made obvious because of the light in the sky background. The colors green and red are dominant in the apostles' clothing. Now, it is the time for you to meet the three great painters of the Renaissance period. They are Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo Buonarroti, and Raphael Sanjo. Leonardo da Vinci was a painter who is also recognized for his development of accurate theories in physics, chemistry, biology, architecture, engineering, and had great knowledge of anatomy. Proofs of his genius were the sketches of a fine machine and notes on thousands of ideas, questions, and theories kept in secret journals. As a child artist, he sculpted heads of smiling women using clay. Da Vinci is famous for his painting of Mona Lisa. Her hint of smile, calm gaze, and stillness emphasized by her beautiful hands has mesmerized art lovers for centuries. The next is Michelangelo Buonarroti. He was a painter, sculptor, and an architect. Pope Julius II commissioned the sculptor to do the paintings for the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. He had to learn how to use fresco and paint on it, not on the wall which was usually the case but on the ceiling. This required him to climb the scaffolding and stretch his neck to paint. This went on for almost four years until he developed tired enlargement on his goiter. He also had to study the story of creation and other Bible stories to depict them accurately. In his creation, he showed Adam resting upon the earth while his outstretched hand receives the hand of God. The anatomy of both figures reflects the genius of the sculptor. The third is Raphael Sanjo. He worked in Florence where he painted many versions of the Virgin with a Christ child. His famous painting, School of Athens, is a tribute to philosophy as a study of knowledge. Done in fresco, he depicted Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Alexander the Great, Euclid, Epicurus, and Pythagoras. St. Peter's Basilica is the best example of Renaissance architecture. Located within the Vatican City, the construction of the basilica started in 1506 and was completed in 1626. The basilica has a dome. Outside, there are 284 Doric columns in four rows. St. Peter's Square was designed in the shape of a trapezoid with a wide facade. The outer section is called piazza, which is elliptical in plan, sloping toward the obelisk at the center. During the Renaissance period, huge churches were built with high ceilings and many windows. These windows were made of stained glass or colored pieces of glass held together with strips of lead, which is a kind of metal. The colored tiles of glass catch the light and passes through the windows, making them sparkle in bright colors. Here are some examples. And that's it for this video, the art of the renaissance period. I hope that you learned and had fun at the same time. See you on my next video. Bye!